So I thought it's time that I lay down my thoughts on the Ancient Gods DLC since now I got a decent amount of time into it. I think the first thing I want to talk about is um, the increased difficulty because it's what id Software promised with the DLC and I'll be honest here. Other, other than the last two phases of the final boss, I honestly didn't find this DLC to be much harder than the main base game. I personally think Cultist Base is still the hardest level that Eternal has to offer, and I only died four times before I reached the final boss, which the last two phases was where I really started to struggle. I have video evidence to showcase that, so you could pretty much check it. It, it was like from my, um, what is it, last two live streams, I, I believe. But even though I had four deaths before the boss fight, um, the four deaths were really silly and I could have easily avoided them if I knew what was coming. And I thought pretty much most of the first level was a cakewalk, even the dual marauder fight, the um, buff totem marauder fight. I literally lost no health and armor in that fight when I first encountered that guy. So I was pretty much scratchless. The slayer gates weren't too bad, so yeah, I honestly didn't have too much too much of a problem with a lot of the standard arena fights other than the final boss the fights are very fun i have to say especially the second level when um when you're trying to get access to activate that one circle thingy to reach the final fight i really loved it, those two fights and they were a lot of fun to play basically a lot of the fights in this dlc it's more like you know late game or master level styled fights because you simply have everything maxed out and i think it's software did a good job with a lot of the arenas where they're very fun to go through especially on the first level there are so many like great combat encounters on the first map the new enemies left me feeling mixed while i do think they have their place in eternal's sandbox I just didn't like how they were designed to cater a specific type of weapon, like the spirits are only vulnerable to the microwave beam, which is very lame that they're forcing us to use one of the worst weapons in the game's sandbox instead of actually buffing it, because I do believe there are a decent amount of weapons in Eternal that, need, that do need buffs, like the microwave beam or mobile turret. I also did not like how, like, you know, in some scenarios, you're trying to microwave beam like the little ghost and sometimes you're getting like completely you know swarmed by enemies like it it, it can be kind of frustrating at times and, and i do feel like sometimes you could just get bad rng that could totally impact your survivability before i encountered the spirit i was ho i was kind of scared that the spirit might be too bullet spongy for me at times because of the first few encounters like it seemed like they were a bit spongy but i have to say like you know i think most of them are okay and i do think um i like the mechanic most most of it because i do like how id software is trying to change up um the overall feeling of fighting possessed demons versus buff totem de demons like how you know they can't be stunned other than using the microwave game but there's a part of me that kind of hates like you know some of the stuff they do like I don't like how my stun I mean not my stun bomb my freeze grenade doesn't freeze the possessed demons like that just doesn't make any sense how come I can freeze a buff totem demon but I can't freeze a possessed demon but only my microwave beam can you know freeze it like it's just kind of dumb and I just don't really like how they're trying to push this microwave microwave beam propaganda on us you know it's just really annoying and <laughs> it just feels forced. Like I said, man, they need to buff up microwave beam instead of just making, you know, mechanics that forces us to use that thing. The Bloodmaker is very cool in its visual design, but just like the spirit, you're kind of forced to attack it with a, you know, certain weapon, mostly a headshot type of weapon, especially on nightmare difficulty. I do know like the grenade launcher from the shotgun is also good, but I just cannot recommend it. It's not consistent enough, and yeah, it's just way more consistent if you just use like a headshot weapon and just try to aim for the head, which isn't too bad, really. I much prefer enemies that really allow more fl flexibility in the weapons sandbox, and it's a shame that id Software didn't do this. The turret enemy is really whatever. I wouldn't say it's good or bad, but it feels unneeded. Same thing with the giant tentacle thing, but I don't mind having them. I enjoyed all the three levels. They were all equally solid. 
I do think the second level is the worst one because of certain fights. Like, I hated that one fight with all the Misty Fog and the Possessed Arachnotron. And I didn't really like the Green Dog encounters that much. It was very lazy. It just gives you an illusion of you going through different fights in different arenas. But it's pretty much different fights in the same arena because of that barrier you have to stay inside. A part of me do wish the levels were more explorative, even though... I did like how the levels still had secrets layering around, and some of them are very valuable too, but I knew it wasn't going to be so complex in terms of the map layout because we pretty much have everything maxed out, so there's not a lot of incentive to explore. Now let's talk about the final boss fight. From what I've gathered, it seems like a lot of people didn't like the final boss. I honestly liked it. Lots of phases, they all play very differently from each other, and I do like how it is strategic at the same time but there is a part of me that do not like how the last two phases are pretty random without you know things can totally go right or go wrong like sometimes you know uh, Samer sometimes he'll be really dumb and just kind of like you know look at you and just be in like the right position where you want him to be where you can just get easy shots on him but then there's times where he'll just teleport on you and he can do massive amount of damage to you with that little slam attack and it's the same thing with the two possessed demons too. Like sometimes the pain elemental has like aimbot like accuracy and the damage just seems very random too. Sometimes the lost souls can totally do massive amount of damage. And then sometimes the you know pain elemental, he's kinda of like nothing. He doesn't really do anything. And yeah, man, like I still have yet to beat that final level without dying. I always seem to die at least once on the they're on the final phase of the boss fight and I think it's just like me getting unlucky or something like that like it's really dumb man because I feel like I've definitely improved a lot better compared to like my very first time fighting the boss fight but I always still kind of get like that random death out of nowhere and I feel like it's just like I just get unlucky at times but every time like what is it like every time I die once to that boss fight, the next attempt, I, I make it look so easy. Like, I don't know, man. Like, like that's the thing here. Like, this boss fight just seems a little too random at times for me. But I don't know. You know, once I play through Ultra Nightmare, I think it's really gonna just boil down to situational awareness and just decision making. Like, I gotta, I gotta really try to play my cards right, basically. Story-wise, it's interesting, I guess. I thought the whole ending was a bit cheesy and unexpected, but I don't know, man. I kind of don't care too much about the story when it comes to Doom games, but I'll see what kind of direction they'll be taking New Doom Universe once Ancient Gods Part 2 comes out. Overall, Ancient Gods is the very first New Doom single-player DLC that we've gotten from id Software, and it's solid for sure, and it definitely delivers in what it's trying to do, catering to hardcore Doom Eternal players, and I'm just ready for part two, and I hope it's just as good as the first one. Thank you for watching, guys.